You folks may or may not have noticed, but I generally avoid covering new or newish fighting games. I have a couple of reasons for doing so, and the main one is that the early days of a game's release are basically chaos, pun fully intended. Even with the accelerated cycle of discovery in the FGC nowadays, people can still end up finding tricks, glitches, hidden mechanics or other nuggets nestled deep within a game for a year or two after release, or possibly even longer. I mean heck, someone just found an infinite for Blair in Fighting Lair a few days ago and it's super easy. It's less of a problem for older games though, because those games have been examined before I even get to them. The discovery period never stops for any fighting game, mind you. Older games are still explored now as well, and they can still yield new tech, but for the most part, any game from generations past that people are interested in have settled like sugar in a glass of lemonade. That said, I have made exceptions before. Battle Fantasia is one of them. I looked into that game when it was relatively fresh because it had some mechanics and gimmicks that really made an impression on me, and because I intend to revisit it in another video at some point. The same applies to Chaos Code, New Sign of Catastrophe, although it's essentially just an update to the original Chaos Code, so it's almost like I'm covering a 5 year old game at this point. Also, both games were written off as DOA when they hit consoles without fantastic netcode, and that means they get to enter my personal Asphodel Meadow! The original Chaos Code was developed by a company called FK Digital. That's FK, not FK. Trust me, I checked. According to interviews with Michael and Mickey Lin, the directors of the game, FK Digital was focused on graphic design when they started working there. Mickey was working with an independent group of developers on a fighting game on the side. His boss eventually noticed this during work hours and suggested that they could make something out of it. Note that the game in question was Super Cosplay War Ultra. Apparently, Mickey Lin was directly involved with the game and the group that made it, Team FK. Team FK had a couple of independent games under their belt, such as Fighters Kyodo Tai. I'm not entirely sure if they're the source of the FK in FK Digital though, or if FK even means anything. Anyway, mockups and menus for the game were made, and they pitched the Chaos Code project to investors in Taiwan, but results were unsatisfactory, as most companies at the time had no idea on how to turn tournament fighting games into steady streams of income. So, the group decided to release the game in arcades, where new fighting games could still gain a foothold. Now, keep in mind this was around 2008, when plenty of unknown games were still able to attract new players without a lot of fanfare, so it made sense at the time. Unfortunately, due to growing pains and the collapse of their initial publisher, FK Digital had to wait until 2011 to publish their game with Sega, although they did have a location test running a few months before then, near the end of 2010. At least one of them happened inside a club Sega to boot, so I assume Sega offered some support, which was nice of them. Maybe that's why Max Anarchy had to be delayed for a year despite having full English voice acting and subtitles. They just had to put all their resources towards Chaos Code. Now way back when Chaos Code was new and shiny and the Lin brothers were promoting the game, they would often say that they thought the game would do well because its gameplay systems were simple. It's been 7 years since then, and I think their prediction has panned out. I've read a few reviews of both Chaos Code and New Sign, and I've seen people praise how easy it is to turn out combos, even though they also tack on the hidden death caveat that can often shackle a game to the bottom of the ocean. I've also seen people gush about the skill select system, which lets players mix and match extra special moves and movements. but. What surprised me at the time was that fighting game fans called it simple too, at least when they compared to other anime styled games. After thinking about it for a while, I think that's a fair way to describe it, in context. Consistency is key to that assessment though. When most people, myself included, hear the word simple in the context of fighting games, we expect things like simplified inputs for specials, extra mechanics that facilitate rapid shifts of momentum in a match, gimmicks that give players a last ditch effort to mount a comeback, and so on and so forth. Many, many developers have sold their games as the simpler, more intuitive alternative to traditional tournament fighters. But the Lin brothers were explicitly describing the simplicity of the mechanics of the game. There's a lot of different mechanics in Chaos Code, about 12 or so, 
but they all have very specific uses, and while they have some degree of versatility, they generally stick to doing what they're advertised to do. Chaos Code's version of rolling is a great example of this. It's styled after rolls from the King of Fighters series, and even uses the same button combination, so it's clearly cribbed from KOF. In KOF, characters can roll backwards and forwards, and learning when to roll and how to react to rolls is a big part of the game. Rolls are invincible on startup, but most of the animation is vulnerable to strikes after a few frames, and the entire animation is vulnerable to throws. A poorly timed roll can lead to bad positioning, a throw, or a very painful punishment. A roll that's used properly can not only avoid damage, but also provide opportunities to punish a player on offense or move to a better position on defense. This is a gross simplification of how KOF rolls work, but those are the basic facts. Chaos Code's rolls are similar, but characters can only roll forwards, and that alone fundamentally changes the use of the move. Instead of acting as an option for movement, where you can dip in and out of range, it's just a dodge. But because there's less going on with it, it's easier to deal with and easier to use. Most of Chaos Code's mechanics are like this. There's a mechanic similar to parrying, but it costs meter, it has cooldown, and it causes a stun state once it's activated. Its super jumps are easier to execute, but you can't double jump afterwards. There are bursts similar to Arc System Works' signature bursts, but they can't be used on both offense and defense the way ASWs can. It's all stuff like that. There are benefits to these tweaks though. For example, because players can't double jump after a super jump, optimal combos involving super jumps require less jump cancelling overall. Super jump combos still exist but they have fixed limits. So there's no need to worry about buffering motions within motions within motions to make sure that you don't go flying off into the wrong direction mid-combo. That's the kind of simplicity that the Lynn brothers were probably talking about. And that's the kind of thing that Chaos Code exceeds at, even at high level play. It removes or changes some pieces of the mechanics it borrows, makes them more generalized, and that generalization allows the game to congeal into a smoother whole. I think the Lin Brothers' background in the doujin scene is the reason why the game was made this way, because that's how a lot of doujin games and other similar games operate. I'll admit that I have no clout or long-standing knowledge about the doujin scene, but I've read the theories and explanations of people who do have that knowledge, and they've said that some of the appeal of doujin games come from their different versions of established mechanics from more popular games, or how much looser they could be in terms of inputs, combo restrictions, and the like. Even though they have derivative elements, they have their own unique feel, and that sets them apart. Chaos Code made some genuine improvements to the things that it copied too. What I really love about Chaos Code is how it deals with its extra moves. Selectable moves are nothing new. Street Fighter's done it, Arcana Hearts done it, it's well trodden ground. But almost every extra special move is useful in Chaos Code, to the point that choosing between them has a real effect on a player's entire game plan. That's not to say that the aforementioned games didn't do that, but Chaos Code takes it to a new height. They're all good options that diversify a character's moveset, and that's a great way of handling game balance. New Sign of Catastrophe generally left those moves alone, aside from a few hitbox changes and some new animations, which is fine because they were generally alright to begin with. But it's fair to ask, why not just add them to the move list without forcing players to choose between them? It's a question every game with selectable moves has to answer, even if some people ask it in a really obnoxious way. And the game even has two unlockable options that give characters all of their moves, so it's something that the devs themselves considered at some point. Aside from the obvious issues of overlapping inputs and bloated move lists, which both go against the simplicity of the game through its consistency, I think the only real argument in favor of such a decision is that it makes both players think about both their own options and their opponent's options. Like I said before, these extra moves are strong and can skew a player's game plan one way or the other. Making that choice, in full view of the other player, sets the pace of the match, much like picking a support character or a groove or some other equivalent option that the select screen in other games do. The same goes for movement options. Choosing between step, which dashes forward, or run, which runs forward, 
also affects their cancel options and even their ability to gain energy for their super meter. And those options can't even be mixed together in the extra options because they overlap even more than the special moves do. It's another thing that FK Digital cribbed from KOF, but in this case, they've actually fleshed it out instead of simplifying it, and it's well improved because of it. Chaos Code has a lot of offensive options, and admittedly, not many defensive ones. That said, I see no need for any combo breaking mechanics. Chaos Code does not penalize its players for blocking or running away, so blocking and avoiding combos to begin with are viable options for players on the defensive. And as I've said before, movement isn't as wild as it is in traditional air dashes. And it's amazing that I can even say that air dashing games are traditional, but there you go. So it's possible to react and defend against normal approaches. If a player spends extra meter to make their approach more ambiguous, that's just resources being put to good use. That's how I see it anyway. However, even with all this talk of simplicity and consistency, it's important to note that Chaos Code is still a fairly traditional fighting game. Its buffering system may be lax, and its chaining system is fairly loose, but it still uses traditional inputs and system mechanics, and some would say that those are still too complex to be called simple at all. Furthermore, the game still allows players to use air dasher tactics, such as micro dashing, rejump combos, step cancelling, and the like. And in some ways, it's even more strict about when and how to use them than other titles within its niche. It's an odd thought, but Chaos Code is like an intermediate fighting game. Not quite as easy to pick up as something like Akatsuki Blitz Camp for Bushido Blade, but not as complex as something like Blaze Blue or Heritage for the Future either. I know that's not the most impressive summation I could give, but that really is what makes Chaos Code special.